Grab your popcorn because we are about to recap a classic movie of a woman getting too attached after an affair and going crazy. The movie is called Fatal Attraction. In their New York apartment, Dan and his wife Beth are getting ready for a party. Their daughter Ellen opens the door for the babysitter. When they arrive at the event, their friends Jimmy and Hildy are already at the party. A woman named Alex looks at Jimmy with a very stuck-up look. Later at the bar, Dan flirts with Alex. Alex is pretty smitten by Dan as he walks away to go home with his wife. Once they are home, Dan brings the dog out to potty. When he returns home, he's disappointed that his daughter is eggplant blocking him. The next day, Beth and Ellen are going to visit Beth's parents. Meanwhile at Dan's work, it turns out Alex is going to be working with Dan. She points at his nose to let him know he got cream cheese on it. I bet she wants some of that cream. When he leaves for work, it's raining super hard, but luckily Alex is there to save him from the rain. They end up grabbing lunch to avoid the rain for a little bit. The two flirt by lighting each other's cigarette. Then they discuss if they will be having an affair. Immediately they go to her apartment and they get rough in the kitchen. Once they're done, they are both breathing heavily in bed. They decide to go out dancing. Then after dancing, they go to her place and they start enjoying each other on the elevator. She presses the emergency brakes on the elevator. Awkwardly, someone walks by and sees them doing it. When Dan goes home, he takes a shower to clean his filth. Then he calls his wife. Dan lies and says he had dinner with Bill the previous night and wasn't able to pick up her phone call. It turns out Beth and Ellen have to stay there longer. Immediately after this phone call, Alex calls and disappointed that he left her in the middle of the night. Dan is a little spooked because he doesn't know how Alex got his number. Alex invites Dan over, but Dan tries to tell her no. She is so persistent that the two end up taking the dog for a walk. Dan tries to play a practical joke on her but Alex didn't like it. She lies saying her dad died of a heart attack, but then says she was just kidding about that. Dan is a little weirded out by this. Then, she prepares lunch for the two of them at her apartment. Dan opens up about his father and his love for the play Madame Butterfly. Alex seems to be growing feelings for him. Dan says he's really lucky to have his life. Alex wants to see him again but Dan makes it clear that he's married. After they do it, Dan has to go home. Alex says she hates it whenever Dan leaves. She goes a little psycho and starts to remove his clothes. However, Dan is like, what the heck? Dan says Alex knew the rules when sleeping with a married man. Then, Alex says she's sick of Dan's nice act. She would have more respect if Dan just told her to F off. So Dan does. This makes Alex upset and she kicks him out. Right as he's about to leave, Alex's tone changes to a nice one asking for a farewell kiss. He goes to her and she starts to kiss while crying. Turns out her hands are bloody. Then Dan realizes that she had cut her wrists. He's frightened by it, then panics as he finds something to bandage her up. Later, Alex listens in on Dan's conversation with his family. She looks disappointed. The next day, Dan says he's gotta go. Alex asks Dan to call her sometime. He promises he will then kisses her head goodbye. Back at home, Dan makes it look like he slept in the bed. Then he realizes he hasn't eaten the food his wife had cooked for him a couple days ago, so he gives it to his dog. When his family is back home, Dan kisses his wife happily like never before. Probably because he knows she's not crazy like Alex. The next day, Dan goes with Beth to see a house they're interested in. It's just outside of New York and it will help them save a lot of money. They both love it. When Dan goes back to work, he's surprised to see Alex there. They talk privately in his office. Alex apologizes for putting Dan through her crisis the other night. Alex wonders if Dan would like to go with her to see Madame Butterfly. Dan rejects her nicely. At home, Alex is just sitting in her room all sad and depressed. She doesn't go to the Madame Butterfly play. Later in the week, his secretary Martha has been dealing with Alex constantly calling Dan. Dan is upset this time when he picks up Alex's call. Dan tries to turn her down again then hangs up. He tells his secretary to deny all of her phone calls from now on. Back at home, Dan tries to get some fun time with his wife, but then his friends Jimmy and Hildy are ringing the door to hang out. They are celebrating their new house move. During the celebration, the phone rings and Beth goes to pick it up. 
Beth says hello a couple of times, but no one answers back. Then, in the middle of the night at 2 in the morning, Alex calls Dan. Alex makes Dan meet up with her. When they do, Alex admits that she loves Dan. Then Alex says she's pregnant. She even gives Dan the gynecologist's number. Dan apologizes to Alex, then Dan says he can pay for the abortion, but Alex wants to keep the baby. Dan is super disappointed to hear this and says how come he doesn't have a say in whether to keep the baby or not. Later, Dan waits for Alex to leave her apartment so he can go in. He rummages through her things. The only thing he finds out is that Alex's dad did actually die of a heart attack. He goes to his friend Jimmy and tells Jimmy everything that has been going on. Dan is scared of losing his family to this psycho. Much later, Alex finds out that Dan has changed his number. This pisses her off. One day, Dan gets home and he hears Alex's voice. Turns out she is at his house talking to Beth. Alex is pretending she wants the apartment once they move out. Then Beth introduces Dan to Alex. And they pretend they are meeting for the first time. But then Alex says they met at the party before. Beth says it's a small world. Beth ends up telling Alex they are moving out to the countryside in Bedford. Then Beth gives Alex their new number so Alex can call them if she's interested in the apartment. Dan is visibly pissed. Later at night, Dan goes to Alex's apartment. He yells at her to stop it. Alex says nothing is going to stop until Dan can take care of his responsibilities. She refuses to be ignored. Then she gets closer to Dan saying they can go back to how it was before. Dan isn't interested. Alex then threatens to tell his wife if he leaves. Dan pushes her to the wall. She rushes to the phone to call Beth but she ends up not saying anything. At their new house at the countryside, Dan gets spooked when the phone rings. However, it's not Alex so Dan is relieved. Much later, Dan is super excited about a bunny he got for his daughter. He's going to bring it home to surprise Ellen. However, Alex follows him into the parking garage. Dan is furious to see that his car has acid poured onto it. He ends up getting a rental car for now. Unbeknownst to him, Alex is following him home. Meanwhile, Dan plays a tape he mysteriously received in the mail. It's a recording of Alex, of course. She says Dan won't be able to get away because there's a baby growing inside of her. She says she tasted him, touched him, and feels him inside of her. Eventually, Dan has arrived at home and surprisingly the tape is still going on. He ejects it and takes the bunny with him inside the house. Meanwhile, Alex is watching from afar. She goes to the window to see how happy Ellen is about the new bunny. Alex hates this and has to throw up. Later that night, Dan continues to listen to the tape. Alex continues her tirade saying she hates Dan. The next day, he goes to the police to see what he can do with Alex. The cop says any actions they take could provoke Alex to continue with the harassment. They would need hard evidence to do anything. One fateful day, Beth comes home to a pot of boiling water. When she opens it, she's shocked to see the bunny inside. She screams and Dan hears it from outside. Ellen is devastated about her bunny. Eventually, Dan tells Beth he knows that Alex did this. Dan tells her about the affair and apologizes for hurting her. She's upset to find out that Dan might be the father of Alex's baby. Meanwhile, Ellen is watching them fight and she cries. Then later that night, Dan calls Alex telling her that Beth knows now. Beth tells Alex to never come near her family ever again otherwise she will kill Alex. Much later, we find out that Dan is currently living in a hotel while Beth and Ellen are home in the countryside. Ellen misses him a lot. One day, Beth goes to pick up Ellen from school. However, Beth finds out that someone else picked up Ellen. Beth is panicking and rushes home to look for Ellen. Meanwhile, Alex took Ellen to a state park to enjoy some ice cream. They are going up a roller coaster while Beth is driving around town looking for her daughter. In her panic, Beth ends up rear-ending someone. Alex then drops off Ellen at home and asks for a kiss on the cheek. She's happy to give it then goes home as if nothing has happened. Once Dan is at the hospital, he's relieved to see his daughter. He finds Beth in hospital bed and luckily she'll be okay. Later at night, Dan sneaks into Alex's apartment building. He rings for Alex and once she opens the door, Dan just busts the door open on her face. Alex tries to run and scream but Dan just tackles the hoe. She's able to get up to run to the bathroom. Then Dan manages to push himself into the bathroom. 
They fall to the floor and Alex knees him in the nutsack. She gets up and the two end up wrestling each other in the kitchen. Dan chokes her neck like a maniac while she coughs for air. He eventually lets go. Once Alex gets her bearings, she grabs the kitchen knife and runs at Dan with it. Dan is able to get the knife away from her. Then Dan just leaves Alex's apartment. Dan is now at the police department complaining about Alex. He doesn't understand why they can't do anything when clearly Alex kidnapped his child. The cop says they can bring Alex for questioning. Back at home, Dan gets a call from the police saying they don't know where Alex is. He tends to his wife who is happy that her husband is home. Beth prepares her bath while Dan prepares something for her. Dan is super paranoid so he starts locking up the house. Before Beth gets ready to bathe, she wipes her mirror and finds Alex right behind her with a knife. She screams in horror but surprisingly Dan doesn't hear this. Alex says the first time she met Dan, she had an instant attraction. While Alex is going on with her rant, the bathtub is overflowing. The dog starts to notice the ceiling dripping. Alex starts stabbing Beth with a knife and at that exact moment, the kettle is whistling loudly. Beth is constantly screaming for Dan until he rushes to her. Dan pushes Alex into the medicine cabinet and she begins slashing him. Eventually he is able to get the upper hand and pushes her into the bathtub. He drowns her while she struggles for air, until finally she stops breathing. Everything is calm and quiet until she pops out of the bathtub for her last hurrah. Luckily Beth is there with a gun and shoots the hoe in the chest. After the police leave their house, Beth hugs Dan and hopefully they all lived happily ever after. Lesson of the day is to not have an affair with crazy people. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.